Hello, and welcome to Fellowship Gaming live stream this evening. Thank you for joining us, and please look at our other social media for additional content and our Patreon to support new content. If you are new, please subscribe and give us a like. Now sit back, grab a drink and or a snack, and enjoy the stream. Now for some legal fun. Fellowship Gaming uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Fellowship Gaming is not published, endorsed, or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. Well, we're going to be playing a fantastic um, scenario tonight called A Festive Operation. As far as I'm aware, it is one of the f only, if not few, scenarios that is set in an actual time. This is set in the time of the month of Kathana, which is a glaring equivalent to December. The party is going to be at the main cafeteria in the Lower Spire Complex, and everybody's going to be having a good time. <coughs> so you guys are sitting around the table just having a good time, eating food, enjoying what's going on. You're, uh, this year's Kathana is a pretty intense. A lot of people are gearing up for the next three holidays, which are... First choices, New Spark and Reunion. These three holidays kind of encompass the entire month of Kathana, and there's almost always a party going on. As you guys are sitting and eating and relaxing from your time off, from your last missions, which can be really ridiculous sometimes, um, a little Raxolite is running through the the little uh cafeteria and they spy you and they're like oh okay a jolly little raxolite garbed in festive attire <clears throat> a jolly little raxolite garbed in festive attire settles into an open seat at the table placing down a tray piled high with cookies candied fruit and other sweet treats they smile offering the tray out to share hi i'm camellia i adore the holidays don't you first choices New Spark, Reunion. There's just so many celebrations this month. I couldn't possibly pick a favorite. How about you? Do you have any plans to celebrate? <clears throat> She's asking questions at you guys. I got coughs today. Now is a good time to introduce yourselves and share what you plan on doing the holiday season. Hello, my name is Besplunk, Common Clan. I will be spending the holiday with my partner, a dragonkin named Kale. And you see, just a, just a cheerfulest little scaramander, decked out with like severed necks, and uh, he's an exocortex a mechanic, and he loves helping everything and uh i plan to go help with every celebration because that's what's fun helping <clears throat> so i'm bella and you know this is a great time of year so much happiness so much festivity it, it's just a wonderful time I mean, I just remember my childhood back in Castrovel, and my parents, even my parents, oddly enough, well, okay, my mom, because I was raised by my mom, was just actually happy, and I finally could do no wrong in her eyes. So this is a great time of year. Oh, and she is absolutely decked out in the barely their skimpy Santa outfit style? You know, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't. Yeah. Zamir has a bit of a somber look. I, I just want, hold, I want to, that hurt. That hurt. That that description is like, 
yeah, I only during this holiday season do my mom does my mom not hate me. That's <laughs> yep, pretty that's much. that's real close, man. Uh, why do you think she was that far away from getting into the adult industry? I know. I'm just saying she's got mommy issues. She has mommy issues. She's a half elf. She has mommy issues. Zamir. <laughs> Samir has a somber look as he says celebrating for all my friends who were lost to that that poor gang they were so misguided we could have been friends still are another reality but this one he's dead and so I celebrate for him Yep. Okay. Okay. And who's playing the Vanguard? Me <coughs> Valoro looks around. He ha- he has a festive hat on, but he's still decked out in his armor. And he's got a great big smile on his face. And he's like, this is the best time of year. The best fights happen. At this time of year, someone gets drunk, someone gets stupid, and they want to throw down. And it's great! I mean, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Some of the best fights happen over Christmas. Bespunk trips up. Yeah, Valoro is the best shopper. Can get right to the front of the line all the time. It's amazing. I mean, you joke about that, but that was my job growing up was getting people out of the way. I'm a big guy. It um it came in handy. Till I stopped doing um whatever those heck that's called, Black Friday shopping. I got hurt real bad one year. Okay. After a few minutes, she's like nodding along and she's like, "Okay, she's like feeding Besplunk cookies." <laughs> I got all the hands. She's like, "Um well, would you be willing to help me spread some holiday cheer? Yes. 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 Yep. It's okay. Wonderful, Camellia explains, clapping her hands in th- their hands in glee. While many people are excited for the upcoming festivities, my friend Kinnick is more anxious than ever. Tonight is his first choices party. And he's desperately trying to make everything perfect. <coughs> First Choices is a Sheeran innovated holiday with, which centers around the exchange of gifts, specifically creations that epitomize the personal style, favorite hobby, or interests of the giver. Groups of friends, and sometimes even strangers, Gather for a show and tell of these items. Usually these gifts are shared in grand choice buffets, accompanied by games to decide who ends up with which gift. Some celebrants also give individually selected gifts to those they care for most. Kinnick's in need of aid. I know you're just the folks to help him. And there's a handout. It says, you'll find Kinnick in his apartment in the eye. It's a lovely neighborhood, so make sure you're on your best behavior. Directions are attached. I'll let them know you're coming. Thank you for your help. Camellia. Do you guys have any questions before you move on? Uh, Are we expected to bring our own gifts for this as well? Oh, no, you're not going for the party. He just needs some assistance in choosing gifts. Oh, okay, okay. That's where the confusion lay. Ah, that's... No worries. You guys are just being so helpful. Yes, we are. (laughs) Uh, Before we continue, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the three holidays. First Choices is a Sharon Innovative Gift Exchange highlighting the interests of gift givers. Uh, Obviously from a race that was emancipated from being a hive mind, the concept of choices is a huge thing. And so that's why they call their holiday First Choices. New Spark is an android-innovated street parade centering around spreading joy and strengthening bonds of community. 
There's floats and fireworks. Reunion, an Akatonian feast celebrating generosity and kinship, despite distance, economic hardship, and personal trials. Bunch of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. It is cool stuff. So you guys head to a Skyrise apartment that's in the Eye, which is a very short distance from the Lorespire complex. Um, as you guys head over to his apartment, you see Kinnick walking up with all his arms held with he's just overburdened with shopping bags. And he's like, uh, he's trying to like trying to get the door open. And he's like, oh, um, did Camellia send you? Yes, Camellia yes. sent us. Oh, We're here to um, help. Could you get Would the door like for me? Yes. Uh, to the door. <laughs> <laughs> All of you just want to open that door She's for like, him. Never mind. He's got it. <laughs> he, oh, thank you, thank you. C come in, come in. Do you need a hand with some of those presents? Uh, n no, no, I just need the door open. His home is modest, clean, and festively decorated. He puts away the groceries and the gifts. Go ahead and give me some perception checks. <clears throat> There's poison. I'm kidding. <laughs> 20 for her. 19 for him. Okay. And then while you're at it, give me culture checks. <laughs> He's right. coughing today. Okay. Uh, 19 for Basquonk. Uh, 13 for Zamir. <clears throat> so 14 for Bella. Uh, and we have a grand total of 13 for Valero. Uh, 26 <clears throat> culture for Bosplunk. And 18 culture for Zamir. Okay, so everyone for, but except for Zamir can see around the apartment there's a bunch of photos. Like electronic photo holders. Okay. And they're of Kinnick and a bunch of other friends. Frequently depicted is another male Sheeran alongside Kinnick, and they're both smiling. <coughs> With the approximation of a Sheeran smile. Mm -hmm. Both Zamir and Besplank notice there is a lot of music memorabilia inside his apartment. Especially for a small band called Sh Sonic Tumult. Kinnick comes back in and he's like, "Oh, uh, thank you for coming by. Sorry that that was a, took a little bit of time. Um, uh, so um, tonight is my first choices party, and I am super nervous. Um, so is this your first first choices party? No, no, no. But tonight is a little special because, um, I." I have a really good friend, and his name is Salid. And tonight, I want to get him a gift that tells him how I feel about him. How strong my feelings are, and I just... I don't know what to get him. It's just... It's so hard. Um... How about... Well, what really what I need help with... I need you guys to help me pick out a gift for him. Okay. And don't worry. Purchase it, and I'll pay you back. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> so, how how well acquainted is your friend with this man you're interested in? Oh my gosh! Oh, it's our favorite band. We often visit dive bars throughout the spike to watch up and coming bands. We've seen Sonic Tumult over forty seven times. You don't need to write it down. It's fine. <laughs> Data yeah, pad I out. just kept forgetting. Oh, crap. Sonic Tumult. Okay. Sonic oh. Tumult. Oh, you want to write Sonic Tumult down? Yeah. I thought you said 47 times. You're like, you don't need to know that. No, Sonic uh, Tumult. Sonic Tumult. Found the datapad. Fantastic. So what do you guys do with that information? 
Oh. I mean, obviously, we're going to see if we can find some banned paraphernalia. Oh my gosh, that's a... I don't know why I didn't think of that before. Um, actually, I think I have a... I think I have a good idea. So, um... Well, there's an issue. Uh, Sonic Tumult merchandise is kind of hard to find. Um, they're not really well known, but you guys can go look at some thrift stores in the area. They'll have it, most likely. Um, you know what? I remember a couple years ago, back when we first saw them, Salid bought a hoodie from Sonic Tumult. And he lost it. You know, if you could find a hoodie, a Sonic Tumult hoodie, I think that would be the best gift. What size? Yeah, mm that's kind of important, too. Medium. Okay. <clears throat> but, I mean, if you, it's going to be impossible to, for you guys to find that. It was a limited run item. Okay, go ahead and give me diplomacy checks for gathering information. And then culture or profession musician to recall knowledge. <coughs> Gosh, dang it. Yeah. Culture or culture. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So black is going to be Valoro. Blue will be Bella. They're both culture. That's and fine. There has diplomacy. Uh, is both okay, or but um, or just so one it's or the it's other? I, honestly, you know what? If you have, I think it's just make one check. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we've got. I think we're good on culture. Uh, yeah. it's the same information. Valoro basically got a twenty-four culture. Okay, you don't have to roll if you don't want to. Um, the spawn Bella's got just like twenty-seven diplomacy. That works. And uh, Zamir is stuck with a near 16. Oh, well, only a 16. Okay, yeah, so you guys... got an 11 culture. <laughs> Bands who perform at dive bars in the Spike typically have merch tables set up for their shows, but none are open during the day. Some secondhand shops in the free markets carry local band merchandise. Second Time Around is a thrift shop in the free markets that occasionally buys out extra merchandise from bands when they update to new items. Second time around, acquired some Sonic Tumult merchandise when the band changed their logo to something more galactic three months ago. With that information, you head to second time around. And you don't get fatigued. Yay. <laughs> oh, let me show you Kinnick. That's what it looks like. <laughs> And this is Camellia. You, uh, Bojan will recognize her because she's now part of the, uh, the one with Salita and. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, that new faction. That. Can't mm -hmm. remember what it's called. The Advocates. Yeah. <clears throat> so you get to second time around, and when you get in there, there's a female Yosoki named Dot. And she runs the store. And this is what she looks like. This is some good art in this one. There's some really good art. I wish I could print that out in color. She goes, hello, hello. Oh, none of you have intro to Data Scourge, right? No. Okay. No. Hello. Welcome to my store. How can I help you? Hi. We are looking for a Sonic Tumult hoodie. If by any chance you might also have one that's signed, that'd be even better. Barring that, if you know where we could find any of the band members, that would also work. Oh. If not, the hoodie's fine. Well, I mean, normally if you just come in here for band merchandise, I would give you over to the, there's the entire aisle. We've got Lita Star, Abyss Head, Strawberry Machine Cake. But, I mean, you're looking for Sonic Tumult. I'd have to go into my inventory records. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take some time, gentlemen mm -hmm. um, and ladies. Uh, can I spawn kelp? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you can help. Otherwise, I'd have to have you come back tonight. So, yeah, let me let me see. Okay, I've got a... 
here, take some care of some of these tasks real quick, and I'll go look on my computer. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. You ha- She needs you to help clean the top shelves and assemble some extra shelving units. You can all make one check each. You either make a, an acrobatics, athletics, or sleight of hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase this. You can... You can there are two tasks. You can make a check for each. Okay. okay. There is setting up, <clears throat> setting up the shelves and cleaning, the, and cleaning the top shelves. Okay. For cleaning the shelves, make an acrobatics, athletics, or sleight of hand check. <clears throat> Go. Well, let's start with Bella and her <coughs> acrobatics. That is a total of 26. Success. And you did say, huh? Acrobatics, athletics, or sleight of hand? Oddly, his acrobatics is better than his athletics. Because he's a dex based. So, yeah, we'll go with his acrobatics. 18. Okay, that's a success. Hmm. Zamir, I thought you were more dexterous. You should fix that. Alright, Zamir tried, but um, since he doesn't have any of the skills, it's a 15. That's a success. Oh, good. And Basponk is a 26 athlete. That fails. No, it succeeds. <laughs> Curse my you guys are rather daft at making... Like, probably Zamir is just like chucking Bisplank up there and he's like all six hands. I'm making sounds tonight, apparently. Mm-hmm. Okay. You now have to assemble the shelving units. Make an athletics or engineering check. Here's where the the success and failure of the party really happens. All right. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, blue will still be her and black will still be him. (coughs) Oh, I'm reasonably confident her 26 is a success. Uh, In what? Athletics. Athletics, that's a success. Um, His nine, I'm not so sure about. Nine does not succeed. Well, amazingly, Samir, with no bonus, <laughs> got a 15 athletic. Okay, he did not succeed. But uh, Basplank is rocking a 23 engineering. That succeeds, and you needed that success. You need at least half success. Nice. Okay, um, let's see here. So Valoro and <clears throat> Zamir just kind of sat, stood there like... They were no, 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 that's slot A. That's... Wait a minute. Um, Bella and Bus Blanc are like, oh, we got this. Sit down. <laughs> you guys kind of finish fairly quickly, and Doc comes back. She's like, oh, I'm pretty impressed. Here's a Mark One thermal capacitor. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm just coughing today. It's that cold air. Um, Dot is like, I checked my records. Good news, bad news. Mm-hmm. Good news is, is I have plenty of inventory. Bad news is, it's in my storage site. You seem trustworthy enough. Here's a key. But I am still taking down your names, because if you steal anything from me, I'm going to the, the first seeker. That's fine. Um, I mean, is it that obvious we're pa- Starfinders? <laughs> oh, yeah, you... You, I mean, so some Starfinders really helped me when uh, the sc- Data Scourge hit. And it's really easy to recognize who you guys are. Oh. You kind of like... She's literally looking down at herself going, really? You hold yourself a little differently. Even even you. <laughs> <laughs> she would. <laughs> so uh, Dot's storage facility is located outside the free market area, which is where you're at. In a rickety building with cracked siding and filthy skylights. 
Why does this not surprise me? <clears throat> it's about a three minute trip, so it's not too far away. As you guys are going there, you see two skittermanders. One purple and one green. They're named Olive and Violet. Olive has purple fur. Mm -hmm. Violet has green fur. That was really well done. <laughs> that was really well done, Ryder. <clears throat> um, they are discussing the upcoming holiday of New Spark and how they can help their new friends parade preparations by testing out some fireworks ahead of time. You just hear over here them. Don't think that's <clears throat> as good of an idea as they believe it to be. But Something is inside like, me is no, saying... No, that sounds like a great idea. No. That, that sounds that... very helpful. <clears throat> <laughs> Here's the problem. <laughs> when you test the fireworks, you no longer have the fireworks. Oh, yeah, that is the problem. We should tell them that. Because they're a one-use item. We should tell them. Hello, new friends. Oh, hello. Um, we overheard. Oh, wait, you. wait, hugs, hugs, yes, hugs. 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 Um, we overheard that you were trying to help your new friends. Oh yes, are you here to help us too? Well, and then they like, bring out sparklers. We got sparklers. Well, Bella, Bella was saying. That if you test fireworks, then you can't use them again. Uh, Which I was in full agreement with you guys until Bella had that great idea. I mean, I guess... They are unfortunately a single-use item. And while I get you want to make sure they work, once they work, they don't work after that. But oh. if you get a grenade launcher, you can use that over and over again. Okay! And they rush off to get a grenade launcher. You have made this way worse than you think it is. <laughs> yeah, Bella is standing there. She wants to say something and has no clue what to say. See, the, the best part is they're going to get a grenade launcher with an underbarrel grenade launcher. Because mm -hmm. why not? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see how this could go wrong at all. They're trustworthy. <laughs> um, you're getting a lot. Of... <laughs> this is going to be so bad. Um, you get into the the building. No, Bella is literally looking at Miss Blunt, going, <coughs> "Oh, what did we just do? We helped them. We helped them, Bella." Um. You go through the building, and it's kind of like a really... Why is my stomach in my feet? The building's... I am not... Looks like a really this... poorly upkept storage center. Except for the last unit, which happens to be Dots. Um, you guys are going walking through, and they're like, there's like three or four fire cabinets as you walk through, and they're all empty except for the two right next to Dots. It's like Dot is the only one taking care of her unit and making sure everything's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's I was not. About to say, wait, what? It's not a scam. It's just it, you can tell that Dot takes <clears throat> care of her storage unit. Mm -hmm. it, it may be cheap rent, but she still takes care of it. Well, yeah, she's got a business to run. Yeah. Um, I was just worried there for a second, thinking we opened it and all of the storage lockers were inside were open, and we're like, uh oh. Nope. Nope. No, okay, yeah. Uh, and her key well, obviously listen. only opens her storage unit, so... I mean, it's... I'm not even trying, though. Really. Have you gone into those, like, self-service in indoor ones where you just, like, open the door and there's just wall walls and walls, and you just walk down? You've seen Storm Night, right? Not Storm Night. Moon Night? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Okay. There's a scene in there that would I could be able to explain how it looks, so... Don't worry about it. Uh, go ahead and give me... So, you walk in, and it is packed full of merchandise... Floor-to-ceiling shelves line the walls, all crammed with small boxes and bulging bags. The interior of the unit is piled high with crates and boxes often stacked up to the ceiling. For this time, all the terrain is difficult terrain. <coughs> You're going to have to take a look through this stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to make a perception check. However, if you would like to make a profession merchant or a DC, uh, no, or a culture check, you can kind of make a quick overview of how the storage unit is organized and it will lower the DC. Hmm. I mean, we'll give a culture try for these two. They've got it. Mm. Blanc with an 80. <laughs> Only a 20. Well, Valoro pulls off a 25. Nice. Nice, Valoro. Zamir, anything or no? Um, oh, yeah. He got his call. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh. Bella got a 17, so not terrible. Yeah, I got the best result. 27 culture. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you guys are like, you're like looking at me like, this is bad. This is like next level hoarders. And you're just like, you like tilt your head and you're like, no, wait, this is highly organized. There, 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 there. You're, just, you're fine. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check now to try to find the Sonic Tumult hoodie. Or any of the merchandise. Okay, so we've got a... 23? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. math. Yeah. 23 for Bella and a 23 for... Valero. Gosh. Uh, 21 for Zamir <laughs> and a 27 for the spawn. So, you guys are to lower the DC twice. The original DC is 20. You blew it out the water. <clears throat> the new DC was 16. You blew that out of the water. <laughs> <coughs> you You find two hoodies. Well, we'll have to pay for both of them, but yes, I think this is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and you're doing a pretty good job. And then you hear this, psh, thump, and a window crashes from through the, not a window through the crashes through the skylight. That is not correct. <laughs> just, you just shoot a window. Hey, a window. <laughs> no, this you hear this, thump, and like. You hear, yay! No! <laughs> and this thing hits through the skylight and bounces at your feet. And it goes, pink, pink, pink. Boom! <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> I love you. Go ahead and make a fortitude save as this flashbang hits the ground in front of you, starting fires. You said reflex, right? Fortitude. Reflex, right? Fortitude. <laughs> Let me draw this map for you guys. Okay. Uh, black will look... No, black, my uh, black is dying. Yeah, yeah. Let's do blue. That's unfortunate. 14 I for Samir, 18 for the Sprunk. 14 saves. Okay, so we've got a 12 for Bella. So there are three separate rooms. Go ahead and place your guys on those squares. Oh, your three-sided die is right there. Okay, and I'm gonna come in and bring. Man, there's a couple twenties under your chair. I'm gonna mark some fire here. Oh, you haven't picked them up yet. Okay. Yeah, it's when he dropped them. Got it. Okay, there is fire there and fire there. Okay, I'm going to explain the mechanics here because holy crap, there are mechanics. Yep, I'm reasonably familiar with fire mechanics. Oh, I didn't mark those.
What are those? Let me get back to the microphone. The red X's are the two fire extinguishers that we mentioned earlier. Okay. Okay. Let me put these all back, and then I can explain what's going on so you all die. Okay. So the orange is fire. The red X's are fire extinguishers. And this is going to get real hot. Pun intended. <laughs> um, you failed. Bella failed, right? Oh, yeah. And did uh, Valoro fail? I doubt he it. He got a 20. Too. Yeah. He's a constitution-based character. Yeah, he's... What did um, Zamir get? Uh, <coughs> Zamir was a... He passed, I remember you saying. It was DC 14. <coughs> I think that's exactly what I got. Okay. Yeah, 14. Then uh, Bella's dazed for a round. Yeah, I kind of figured. Um, okay. God. So... Each, what is dazed in Starfinder? Uh, let me read that for you. Dazed is you can take no actions. Yeah, it's worse than stunned, which is stupid. <coughs> well, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, they did it. Oh my gosh, no. That's what happened. Because <laughs> you yeah. know exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Doof. And she's like, <laughs> it's like that idiot at the just the grenade throwing range who just chucks it and it lands in his foxhole and you're like F as the drill <laughs> DS just pulls you into the other one. <laughs> you mean like what happened? They did that in Polly Shore's yeah, the army. Yeah. Now. That's that they did it's such a good example of that Pull one. Pull the though. pin, throw the grenade. Pull the pin, throw the grenade. Pulls the pin, th uh, throws the pin, and drops the grenade. And you're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I think the best, one of my best army stories is actually from the grenade assault course, which you have to do before you throw the live grenades. Because one of the, one of the obstacles is you lie on your, you've got a loggy on your side, you lie on your back, and you sidearm the grenade over into an enemy trench. And so I pulled the pin. Sidearm my grenade. It lands right in front of the trench. Oh. Skips over the trench. Hits the silhouette behind the trench. Falls in the trench and goes boom. <sighs> Drill Sergeant says, you can't do that again. Hands me my <laughs> second grenade. Pull the pin. Sidearm the grenade. Skips right in front of the trench. Hits the silhouette behind the trench. Falls in the trench and goes boom. That's when you Drill go. Drill Sergeant's like... So anyway, you want, you want to see me do it again? <laughs> no. Because he would have said yes. And then if I failed, <laughs> I would have been doing a lot of push-ups. Okay. Um, we're going to go into initiative, but I want to explain how fire works. Because this is going to be important. Um, if you enter or begin your turn in a burning space, you take 2d6 damage. The fire damage. No save. <clears throat> um, every round it has a chance to spread into an adjacent square. Mm -hmm. Each square has a chance, so yep. it gets real big real fast. Um, it's always funny when it spreads into the adjacent square that it's already in. Yeah. <laughs> it spreads there. It's already there. Mechanically, uh, oh, you have, uh, let me rephrase that. You have numerous ways to put out the fire. The skill to do each so there's going to be a bunch of skills to change it. It's going to be DC 15 flat everybody. Okay. Um, if you have other methods of firefighting, such as a weapon with the extinguished property, you can do kind of, you can do a lot with it. Oh, she I'm going to keep those rules up because they're ridiculous. So a fire extinguisher, um, as a standard action, you can extinguish one burning square or two adjacent squares as a full round action. With the usage of one per round as normal. If you throw a one... If, if you throw a one... If you throw one bulk of water on a fire, it automatically extinguishes the square as a standard action. If you make an athletics check to use blankets and other objects, you can smother an adjacent burning square. There are two non-functioning fire suppression nozzles, one in each half of the storage unit. 
you need to make a computer's check, you activate it. It will automatically put out a square in one square in both halves. Uh, engineering, you can create a fire break around an adjacent fire. This reduces the chance of that fire spreading by 10% to a minimum of 10%. Profession firefighter or survival. You can extinguish the flames. Yay. So those you have athletics, computers, engineering, profession, firefighter, slash survival. Those are the checks you can make to do things. Um, and then you can have water or fire extinguisher. Okay. Okay, so where's... The fire suppression system is a computer's check. Yes. Is there a place we have to be standing for that? No. Okay. No. That's... Nah. Okay. Okay. Got it. It is... We something. haven't rolled initiative yet. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to wave initiative because it's on initiative zero. So, at the end of the round. So, you guys go first, and then it goes. <coughs> okay. She's dazed. She's dazed. Uh, athletics to put out an adjacent. Yep. Yep, he's going to try his athletics. Okay. DC 15. He fails. It's only an 11. Okay, we need Zamir and Besplunk. Hmm. My blue dice are not rolling well tonight. Well, let's see. Uh, my question for Samir is, uh, can I His use infinite worlds? infinite worlds to create an environmental cold hazard to put out fire? Uh, can you make a water hazard? Mm, it just does. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with infinite worlds, so. Yeah, I just pick an energy or physical type of damage. Um, mm -hmm. If you choose an energy type damage, yeah, cold will function as water in this case. Okay. So, uh, Samir will uh, yeah, we'll just bring a little bit of the arctic right here. Okay. And as um, Zamir will do that, bring through the thing and it'll like it'll melt a little bit and so the water will just kind of put out the fire yeah so there's no more fire there and then Bespunk will move over here pulling out his flame rifle because it has the under barrel ex fire extinguisher on it <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 okay okay you can only put out one though yeah yeah okay so. Um, I'll get, uh... The one closest? Okay. Okay, that's the standard action. You, yeah, just... Okay. High or low, Casey? High is good. High is good. Does not spread. Yeah. Next round. Okay, so what's left? Just that one? Just that one square next to Besplunk. Okay. <clears throat> now that she's snapped out of it, she will move over to it, and she will use her athletics to try and put it out. And that would be a, an 18. 18 succeeds, and you just... Okay, fantastic. Um, the firefighters come about five rounds later. I'm like, oh man, you've already put out the fire. And then, like ten seconds after that, Dot's like running through the door. He's like, oh my gosh, no, my stuff, my stuff. The, the fire's out. Yep, we helped. Yeah. Oh, oh. We'll take two of the hoodies. How much? No charge. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Here's your key. 
Also, Thank you. I imagine in the meantime, we got on the computer and get our fire suppression working. Yeah, yeah. So we're like, oh, we fixed your fire suppression system. Thank you very much. And as you walk out, no, no, let me rephrase. <clears throat> Dot turns to firefighters like, how'd you get here so fast? And the one guy's like, oh, there's these two skittermenters outside that uh, 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 told us about the fire, and so we came running. <coughs> Your fault. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it would have happened anyways, but you gave them a grenade launcher. <laughs> no, we didn't. They got the grenade launcher them damn selves. <laughs> he just didn't dissuade them from getting it. I just made the suggestion that they were reusable. As opposed to fireworks. Um. <laughs> yes. But many times more dangerous. You guys head back to Kinnick's apartment. And you're like, hey, we got hoodies. Hey, you got two of them. That's amazing. He gives you a bag of chocolate raspberry cookies. And mm. um, a ghost killer weapon fusion seal. Which is useless. Well, that's not actually useless, technically. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> some strange spirits start talking to me about Christmas, and I had to get this for self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> that would totally be a Starfinder answer to it. <laughs> okay, it's been a week, so if you want to use the Ghost Killer Fusion, you can. The Fusion Seal. Hmm. A week later... Um, I think I've already got everything on my submachine gun I can. Okay. I'll put it on the fl flame rifle. Okay. I'm going to assume it just happens because there's not a... They didn't provide a level mm -hmm. on here. So I'm just going to say it's up to level 20. Okay. No, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for over here. Um, Camellia sends you another... It's over here. I'm in the wrong stack. Sends you another handout a week later. Thank you for helping Kinnick find a gift for Salid. Your kindness gave him the courage to share his feelings with Salid, and they had a wonderful time celebrating first choices together. Have you ever visited a New Spark parade? New Spark is a holiday created by androids and centering around a parade or a street festival. Originally, this parade was a march for recognition and justice, as androids fought to be legally recognized as citizens. In time, this parade became a celebration of freedom and community. Today, teams of revelers, often called spark lores, yep, plan a parade incorporating homemade floats, outrageous outfits, and loud music. The parade stops at various homes and businesses along its route, receiving gifts of food, drink, or conversation from the residents. The new spark parade is tonight, and my friend Yishin and their team of sparklers have faced setback after setback. Now poor Yishin isn't sure they'll be able to finish their float in time for the parade. I'd hate to see Yishin's hard work wasted. Please head down to the parade staging grounds near Jatembe Park and lend Yishin a hand. Their float is the jeweled flower. Your friend, Camellia. <clears throat> Bella, I'll bring the grenades to celebrate with. <laughs> <laughs> that is... Oddly... Somewhat exciting and abjectly terrifying. <laughs> no, don't do that. What? No grenades. But why? The streets surrounding <laughs> Jatembe Park are we packed. We put out a fire last week. Yeah. See, nothing happened. <laughs> Only because we were really quick on it and on scene to handle it. Mm -hmm. No grenades. Fine. The streets surrounding Jatembe Park are packed with festival goers dressed in bright colors and carrying packaged snacks and small gifts to share with the sparklers and other celebrants. The parade route has been blocked off and many completed floats already line the street, each more extravagant than the last. Sparklers surround their floats, dancing, singing, and socializing with the crowds. Nearby floats include a holographic unicorn frolicking, frolicking Amid cotton candy clouds, a self-contained sphere of water that changes shape, 
A jungle scene with animatronic animals and a cartoonish starship wreathed in rainbow smoke. Yishin and the jeweled flower are off in the small side garage. The jeweled flower is a gorgeous float in shades of red, pink, and white. The float's sides are lined with delicate rows of silk and crystal flowers. Surrounding a central platform made in the form of a red rose. The petals are crafted from stiff silk, soft yet firm in design. Dancing atop a hoverboard above the center of the rose is an android in extravagant flowing attire. Starfinders, the android exclaims, riding their hoverboard down to ground level. Camellia said they would send someone, though the description doesn't do you justice. The android slips their hoverboard under their arm and bows in greeting. Yishin at your service, though I hope you'll be also be at mine. Holy crap. I know, you know, I read it before, now I read it now, and it's... Read it a lot differently with your character in mind. Despite the float's beauty, it's clearly unfinished with missing flowers, an unfinished platform, and no other features. Fortunately, the jeweled flower isn't the only unfinished float. Another float, this one a hovering castle festooned with streamers and flags, is also under construction in this modest garage. Numerous sparklers scurry around the second float, including the Lashunta installing an old-fashioned cannon filled with fireworks, and a familiar pair of skittermanders tinkering with a holographic projector. <clears throat> Violet and Olive are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we noticed. Let me show you Yishin. That is Yishin. Interesting. Okay, so... They've just been having catastrophe after catastrophe. People are getting hurt. The supplies aren't showing up. You're here to help. <coughs> Goodness, wrong time for me to DM, apparently. <laughs> um, Yishin is the only sparkler left for the jeweled flower. And they can't complete all the things at the time. So they request you to join their sparkler team. Before you ha before the parade begins, you must complete the jeweled flower. You can attempt one skill check to represent your efforts. All the DCs are 17. You can make a couple checks, but here are some suggestions. Automation. A, p a player can use computers or engineering to program the float with exciting mechanical movement. Mm -hmm. Construction. A player can use athletics or engineering to complete construction of the float's central platform or other large components. Decorations. A player can use acrobatics or sleight of hands, sleight of hand, not multiple hands, sleight of hand, to add decorative flourishes to the float or complete, complete other fine details and difficult to read places. Safety. A player can use perception or piloting to ensure that there are clear sight lines for the float's driver. And otherwise, and or otherwise, ensure safety of the float. Okay. As you guys start, Olive and Violet come over, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Besplunk hugs, hugs," and they're like, "Thank you for the grenade idea. Mm -hmm. It was so useful." Mm-hmm. Also, we're really sorry about the fire. Oh, it's okay. We, we, we're we're going to help, too. <laughs> um, they can give up to two players a plus two on their check. Nice. However, <laughs> failure has negatives here. If you accept the bonus to have the two help you, <laughs> and you fail by five or more... There's a catastrophic damage, and you take 2d6 points of damage. How could that ever happen? That only happens if they help you. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and start making your rolls. Decide amongst you who should utilize the plus two circumstances, plus two bonuses. There's two of them. Um, you can just have them ignored, but kind of role play your decisions. So, which one was acrobatics associated with? Decorations. Um, decorations. 
yeah. Bella's like, yeah, I, I'm reasonably good with decorations. You're so. Oh, can we help? Can we help? Can we help? Can we help? Anyone. Can we help? Oh, oh okay. Metal is absolutely no. <laughs> Go ahead and make your check. <laughs> that is a 19. That is a success. Besplank and or Zamir and or Valoro. Mm -hmm. okay. um, athletics was in there. What was that? Construction to kind of help complete the construction of the, of the float. Uh, Besplank will... Uh, cover safety, so he'll do a piloting check. Um, okay. He has an e-tump because he's super good. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Don't worry, my friend Zamir. He's hopeless. He needs help. Alright, so that's a 23. Yes, that succeeds. You're able to build a fine structure. And okay. Bella is able to get really nice, like... It's holographic, but at the same time, there's a realistic component to it. It's nice. Okay, Zamir and Valoro. Zamir is like, I don't know any of these things. Help me. And so perception. He's, he's using that perception with their help. And, and okay, like all of us gonna be like, I'm gonna help you. Yeah, look over there. Look over there. Yeah. Please tell me. Well, it's not enough. But it's a 14. With their plus two? With their plus two. Okay, you did not fail by five or more. No. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I just, I don't understand floats. Okay. <laughs> Valoro? Yeah, he'll do construction. Okay. He will accept their assistance, because there's a lot of heavy stuff to move, and extra hands makes for light work. Okay. Said the DC is 17. Uh huh. Are you using their help? He is using their okay. help. Okay. He does not succeed. What's the but total? It's not by five or more. Okay. So it's 13. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was close. close. Oh, it I'm sorry. Close. But Splunk was doing safety. Yeah. My bad. Mm -hmm. The sight lines are all clear. That's my, I I heard athletics in my head for some reason. So okay, yeah. yeah no, he he fails, but I mean, like at least he doesn't screw up really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. He doesn't break something. Yep. <laughs> That's the important part. That's the important part. I know if he wouldn't have had the help, he still wouldn't have broken anything, and he still would have failed. Yeah. Could have been bad, though. Mm -hmm. Well, his acrobatics is far better than his athletics, but when it comes to acrobatics, no one in this party has what Bella has. But Zong does. <laughs> I was going to say something. She has those, too. <laughs> but she is actually also very acrobatic. Okay, I'm going to show you what's going on, because as you guys are ready to go, you you get the float fixed. The next float, one of the projectors starts sparking, and the one of the projections of the little jesters comes out and manifests as a living hologram. Combat. Of course it does. Of course it does. <laughs> Two by three. Yeah. 
there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just like overcomes all of Violet detonate the charges. <laughs> <laughs> the tiny is the projector. The big is the hologram. Go ahead and place yourselves, and then let's roll initiative. Okay. Hmm. That makes it easy. Wow. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Um, we have Zamir, Valoro, Bella, and Besplank. Besplank. Okay, Zamir. Uh, 16. Point. Five. Okay. Valoro. Uh, 3.1. Bella. 8.2. Besplank? Uh, 19.8. <laughs> yeah, that point eight is nice. Okay, so here's the order. It's going to go Besplank, then the projector, then Zamir, then the hologram, then Bella, and Valoro. It's just revenge for my for last night's rolling. Yeah. <laughs> okay, top of the round, Besplank. Let's see. Uh, the projector is tiny. Okay. I mean, I don't know if attack, but maybe try to fix? Yeah. So, well, so I know who's next in initiative. The projector. Okay. And then it's Zamir. Zamir. This turn. Go there. And we're going to provide, we're going to pull out our pulse staccato rifle and we're going to provide a herring fire on the projection. Which succeeds. On the projector or the hologram? On the hologram. Okay. So, uh, because of Basalk's ability, and he succeeded, um, the first time the projector attacks someone, they'll get plus three AC. Okay. And um, whoever attacks the hologram first will get plus three to their first attack. Always nice with harrying fire and covering fire. Stack like that. Mm -hmm. It's real nice. Okay. It is now the projector's turn. Uh, the projector is going to fly forward and move him three squares. And he's going to... He, little gun pops out. And a flare gun pops. And he goes... Foom! At... Bella, from what I can tell. Right? Is Bella that one right there? That's Bella. Yeah, that's Bella. Okay. Does a 19E hit you? It does. God, that was a bad roll, too. You take five points of fire damage. Ouch. As the flare just slams into you. Okay. Um, it is now... Where's my initiative? It is now Zamir. Okay. Hmm. 
The Splunk is level five, right? Yeah. Okay. He's the only one that pulls us up a bit. Yeah. But you're still at low tier. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure my math was correct. Hmm. I don't think I can stagger either of these, so how far apart do they make anything? <coughs> oh, yeah. So they're fine. So, uh... Oh, man, I don't feel real bad. Um, so he's going to cast Sliced Reality. So they can do Fortitude saves. What's the DC? Um, 18. No. And no. Alright, so they both take um, 7 slashing, right? No, no, it just says damage. So Untyped. 7 damage. Okay. Untyped damage. The worst kind. The worst kind. Nothing prevents it. Yeah. As their alternate cells pop in and go, stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Okay. And then he'll move over here. Guess we're going that way. Uh, what's the different distance between ye, uh, the big guy and Besplank? Uh, 35 feet. Okay, it's going to fly. It's going to move twice. Nah, it's going to charge. Who's in a straight line in front of it? Um, Plus Blanc would be the closest. Plus Blanc would be the closest. Okay, uh, then he's going to charge and slam into Plus Blanc. Uh, does a 23k hit? Yes. Okay. Uh, take eight. Oh, wait. 23. I forgot. No. Okay. Because of my covering fire. Yep, because of your yep. covering fire. Okay. She needs new armor. <coughs> I think she needs to get to level five, though, before she gets it. Yeah, I'd wait till then. Okay. That's what's um, going on. It is now Bella with Valoro on deck. Okay. So, Bella can see it. Yep. And as part of a trick attack, does it's where she ends her movement that the trick attack happens, right? Yes. Okay. So she is going to trick attack the hologram. Let's go 5, 15, 20, 30. Are you... Did you hit a threatened square? Doesn't matter. It's my trick attack. Do you have uh, mobility. mobility? Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and make your... Because I know very well that society puts me in confined spaces most of the time. Yes, it does. So. Use a different dice than the blue one. <laughs> There's two blue ones and they both suck. Just knowing your dice, Casey, don't use the blue one. Orange. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Black for trick. Fair enough. So you'll get plus three to your attack to hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Orange will have a plus three. Orange gets a plus three. Okay, so 22 to trick. Probably no. not. No. So, 25 to hit. 25 to hit, yes. Mm. 
So that is six piercing. Give me a second. Six piercing? Yeah. Okay. It's still up. Uh, Valoro. Valoro. Starts going crazy, starts vibrating, yep. gets a plus one to AC. Okay. Both ACs, right? Yeah, just plus one AC. Plus one AC. It's an enhancement bonus. Uh, he manifests his weapon. Uh, just his, uh, he doesn't need to manifest a weapon. Oh. He can manifest, manifest his shield? shield? I don't think he has a shield to manifest. I can't remember. I think he just has a normal shield. Mark. Ring wear, thunder strike. His only shield is his Every ability. clothing. Control cubic pool, reactive... Cascade, Entropy Shield. Oh, he does so, have his yeah. Entropy Shield? Yeah, then you'll activate it. Yeah, it's true. But and you can activate that as part of like shield. a move action, too. So, Yeah, he activates that. He's going to step up to the hologram and try and put a world of hurt on it. Okay. So. Uh, six. So 14. 14 E, e will not hit. Not the best roll, but okay. And the gesture goes, Ha ha, you are a silly king. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's now Besplunk. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm not worried. So, uh, Besplunk will take a look. If I'm moving he can around step. here. It's a bit far to step. Oh. Yeah. He was here? Yeah. yeah. You're right. Where do you think you're going? Natural one. Over here. Ah, <laughs> ah. And then um, I'll pull out my survival knife. So now we're flanking. And then... Um, Which is better? And do I have something electric? No, sonic, fire, solid. Nope. Okay, just checking. All right. So, um, we'll do some more herring fire because that's helpful. And let's see what's our bonus. How much damage did you do? You did six? Yeah. Is that a magical weapon? Yes. What what fusion do you have on there? Glamoured and merciful. Mm, that's good to know. It seems that not all your damage went through. Uh, I guess. So, yeah. yeah, use the ghost touch. Mm -hmm. I'll focus on the projector. Okay, so... Did you attach the ghost killer? You attached it onto the... It's flame rifle. Your flame rifle. Yep. And then, um... Uh, it's tempted so to put it on my survival knife, but... I'll quick draw that out as well. And then... Uh, why is it still going into that wall? So it's... Going here that way into the wall. Okay. So that is so disorganized. Uh, twenty-three E. Yes, that'll hit. Four. Oh, we should use the red dot. That makes the fire burn brighter. Uh, eight fire, ghost killer. And ghost killer gives all the damage, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's me do full damage. Yeah. Okay. Seems to take a decent amount chunk of damage. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, and then that's Splunk. Okay, the projector. The projector is going to fly five feet that way. Not five feet. Fifteen And is going to turn at you and fire another flare. 
Ooh, that would have been bad. Uh, does a 28E hit you? A 19 did, so. No, if you overroll, it's a miss. We all know this rule. <laughs> Four points of fire damage. It causes a stack overflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the future. We have these problems. Uh, Zamir is up. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so we'll come up here. He'll draw his static arc pistol. And uh, and static arc is blue. So he'll try and uh, attack the projector. Okay. I don't understand why our dice do this. Complete opposites? Yes. You roll maximum damage. And then you roll a one to hit. Yep. Yep. Well, your dice do that. Yeah. Mine tend to not. Yours do that really often. Is the it's it's either it's it's max and everything. Your blue dice hate you. And then I have my black and lotus die that are either Success or failure? <laughs> Nothing in between. <coughs> okay, um... Hologram. <laughs> oh, dice jail, huh? Um... So it can think about what it did. <laughs> the hologram is going to hit the Splunk. That's fair. 16k? No. It says... <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know what to say in that position. <laughs> now it is Bella and Valoros. That okay. was funny. You, you punch so high. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, Bella is going to designate the projector as her target. She'll wind up over there. All right, so, yeah, black will be trick attack. Oh, the trick attack was completely successful. What is the it, Casey? natural one. What's your total? For a trick attack? Yeah. 28. What's your total for your hit? Oh, it's a natural one it's at all. It's a natural all, one. Sorry. It doesn't matter. But what's your total? I'm curious. Nine. Uh, no, no, wouldn't have done it. <laughs> No, she's not that good. Uh, Valoro, yeah. I, let's see. Does he get an entropic pool? Oh, he uh, has yeah. To he be automatically dead. gets one of the. He's got one. Yeah. So he's only got one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's hard to build him up with the correct entropic pool unless you really know him. You have to. That, that's the issue with the, the vanguards. You have to know the vanguard. To be able to like do all the cool things, um, mm -hmm. unlike like a Solarian where it just auto goes. Just punch. It, he, yeah, I know. Just punch, but it's like if it doesn't attack him, he's not getting anything. Yeah. He now has the same problem it has. That's a twenty-four. To hit? To hit. Oh, yeah, it hits. <laughs> yeah, like I said, he's got the same problem it has. He's rolling way high to actually land a hit. <laughs> Terrible problem to have. Oh, yeah. That's nice. So, 11 damage. Acid. Yes, and bludgeoning. Well, you can choose. Oh, acid, yeah. Yeah, you can choose. Acid. No f magic, no fusions, because you can't do that on the hits, which is stupid. So, 11, you said? Mm-hmm. Halved. To 5. Fun. Right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, at level 5, I choose the force option, so that doesn't happen ever again. <laughs> ever again. <laughs> I'm immune to thunk! No, you're not. Okay. You're not immune to this. Besplunk. Because at level, I think level 11, you can get, you can add reach. 
onto your thing so you can like punch air and it just hits them. It's real fun. So you're like a mantis shrimp. Yeah. Exactly like a mantis shrimp. Uh, things are scary. Yeah, they're terrifying. They're also huge. Oh, no. That's big. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, Pospunk will provoke by firing right into melee. Uh, 17E. That'll hit. Okay, so, uh, 7 fire with a ghost killing fire. And it goes, why did the chicken cross the road? No, no, no. Why are chickens so funny? Because! <laughs> I love that. That's a good one. I showed my wife that the other day. She's, she was laughing. Kid's a genius. He's a cute little kid. Have you not seen that? Mm -mm. Kid comes out holding a chicken. They're like, okay, tell your joke. He goes, why are your chickens so funny? Because. <laughs> That's good. Uh, 29 to hit. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, six points of bludgeoning damage. Yep. <clears throat> Um. Oh no. That was one of my six funny bones. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, <laughs> and then it's gonna like. So you're saying it was humorous? <laughs> I have it's two of those as well. It's gonna hit you. <laughs> it's just gonna hit you. Um, 24k. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna say. That was a bad joke. <laughs> For another seven points of bludgeoning damage. Yeah. But like the way it says it is like, that was a bad joke. And then like, eh. it's like it's got a script or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. It is now Zamir's turn. Let's see. Uh, you know, we can... And we're rolling ones anyway, so we might as well full attack. Alright, so stack our pistol, full attack. So Just crit fish at that point. Yep, so 17E. That hits. For 8 electrical. Okay. Against the projector, if I didn't say. No, I understood. Okay. And that's only an 8. That misses. Okay. Okay, it is now the hologram. Oh, I am sorry. Now the hologram hits Besplank. So do the attack of opportunity now. Because he did the full attack before. Because he hit me twice. No, so one was a reaction. Mm -hmm. And then it was his turn. Well, I know. but uh, Actually, I think you skipped the projector. Yeah, and that's the issue. I, I missed... I switched the two people. Uh, so it's okay. the projector's turn. Yeah, so now it's essentially the projector's turn. He still would have hit you. There's no change in dice. Okay. Uh, straight to your chest. Uh, 22. For five points of fire. It's doing consistent damage on you. got a trick attack off i'd show what damage was <laughs> okay now it is bella and valoro's but it turn is the same thing if my trick attack succeeds the shot goes wide if the shot hits trick attack is me just looking like a fool it's the story of every operative before seven. Yeah. Oh yeah <laughs> tyla still had issues i mean her acrobatics is obscene for level four because that's what she uses. I mean, she's just going to kind of do a little circle because she has to move. You don't have to. You can just sit, stay where you are. But, I mean, you can do a circle. Yeah. Might as well. Might Get as some well. movement now. Keep her athletic build. Mm -hmm. It's okay. My swashbuckler does a spet stats roll to tumble through people. Ooh, maybe. So that is a, okay, 32 trick. Yes, that succeeds. I hope so. <laughs> and so that is now a 19k flat-footed. Yes, that hits. 
And now I have to look for sneak attack damage. Uh, level 4, 2d8. 1d8. I think 2 is at 5. Okay. He goes up to 3d8 at 5. Yeah, it scales ridiculously. Yeah, I'm pathetic. Now I'm level 5. Your life sucks. <laughs> okay, yep. That is nice. 14. Oh. That was a that was a nice attack roll. That was a really good attack roll. Okay. But uh four you get to choose your debility trick. Yeah. Yeah. She's so, so it's flat footed. Flat -footed. Okay. Yeah. Valoro. Cause yeah, she has debilitating trick. Hmm. Just punch him twice, Valoro. Oh yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. You were in the afterglow of actually hitting <laughs> <laughs> with her trick attack. Yeah. It's rare at this level. Stupidly rare at this level. You're yeah, let's just full a tank. That's a minus four. Mm hmm But it's E. Yep. Okay, so nine. Nope. Ooh, that was the that highest. That was the high. <laughs> uh. Alright. Uh, provoking again. Uh, let's see. Uh, 15E. 15E, not counting a flanking bonus? No, uh, it's firing. a ranged weapon, so oh, I can't flank. That's, that's it. good. I'm just double checking. Yeah. Uh, that misses. Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys. I should stop rolling this brown die. I almost crit you. Uh, for <laughs> six. Six? Yeah. Doing fine. Uh, the projection is up. It's going to fire at you. For a 23. And deal. Good night. Six points of fire damage. I don't think that's allowed. Lower it down to five, please. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to move six squares that way. There's a wall there. Uh, move it one square this way. No, no, sorry. One this way, this way. and then to me. It's going to give you a break a line of sight on, on you. Okay. Because the float's there. <laughs> um... It is now Zamir's turn. Uh, Zamir will move there, and let's just see if their more holiday selves can knock them back into sense, so they can take uh, fortitude saves. <coughs> nope. Alright, nine damage to both of them. The projector snaps and breaks, and the hologram disappears. Holiday cheer wins again, everyone. <laughs> yeah, combat's over. And with that, we're going to take a 10-minute break. Come back and join us here pretty soon. Uh, and we're going to go to break. Have fun. Mm. And they were never seen again. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back. Okay, so you guys just destroyed a hologram and its projector. Olive, Violet, Yinshin, and everybody else kind of come back in. They're like, oh, that was pretty good. And Olive goes, oh, look what I found. And hands you a diffuse hard light hand wrap. And Olive goes, wait, Olive handed you their hand wrap. Violet goes, and here's some Tetrad rings. Those would have been helpful. Yeah. Earlier. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know to be fair no neither did we um even though we had the glaring clue of here's your ghost killer fusion oh, we just saw it was a random gift yeah it's always a random it's gift. always a random gift here's a random gift funnily it's going to be useful the next time you get somewhere this isn't a Zelda dungeon, Casey. It's not you get the item you can use in combat. 
And to be fair, most of the time when you get seals, they're garbage anyways. Yeah, it's true. I, I was reading on the forums, they're like, did you forget that this rule exists? And, like, the two people who put it in are like, no, we didn't really forget the rule exists. We just wanted to put it in the game so that it at least shows up in the society games at least once. And they're like, thank you? It was worthless? And they're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> it was like Jenny Jabarski or something like that. One, one of Jenny's. Because she did uh, the Ren Crotas. Where you mm -hmm. get that seal to make it merciful. Can't apply it. It doesn't work. Because you're about to go dr chase Jurassic Park style down the down the thing. But you can <laughs> now if you take the right option. Yes. You can now. There is an option. I think there's two. Mystics and mechanics have a way to do it. Yes, they yes, they can. But you have to play the head. You have to play a lot of head, yeah. <laughs> So, Yinshin's like, oh, this is to great. Fair, you have to plan ahead with these characters anyway. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no worries. This is great. Um, I just need someone to... Okay, we, get, we, need, to, we need to get it going. Okay, so here's how it is. Um, one of you needs to pilot. And then you can do any other task on the float, such as throwing candy to the crowd, dancing or controlling animatronics with an appropriate skill check. The pilot will use piloting. Everyone else can use kind of just whatever they want to kind of go crazy. Um, your choice on skill checks. It's all going to be DC 16. Okay. I have a 12 pilot team for Besplunk if you want. I think Besplunk is the pilot regardless. I mean, my piloting's 13. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Someone Deck gets space? I mean, Operative? He's a deck space mechanic. Just I have Operative's Edge. Oh, yeah. Operative's Edge will do it. <laughs> uh, that's my advantage. I have... Edge. You have the Edge. It may be an ability for some. Yeah. yeah. By the so, way. So, I mean... Um, she's fine with not piloting. Okay. Uh, Splunk she is... is quite fine with doing dancing because that has in the past saved our butts okay because she's fairly competent at that okay sounds good she was a gymnast rhythmic motion is kind of in her forte uh valoro is probably going to be throwing candy okay hard <laughs> athletics check then <laughs> if he's just gonna be winging it <laughs> no he's actually i he's actually gonna be like trying to get the throw it to like the littlest kids okay we'll make that an acrobatic so perception check. oh perception okay perception okay the ones that are trying to stand him back oh, okay he's trying but, to make sure everybody gets yeah, it and that's fun that's okay what he's doing look he's at Valoro to... being nice <laughs> just like when he, like he chucks it i'm just like thinking like just full on just wham <laughs> <laughs> and the little kids just tug. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, I, I, that thought crossed my mind too, but it's like, no, nah, Valoro really would probably just be like kind of looking for the kids that are. He'd be throwing handfuls out, but then when he sees like the really little kid that's like with Baron, and the parent's like, go get it, go get it, and the kid's not going and getting it, he's going to try and get bigger handfuls of them. Okay, okay. What is Valoro doing? We just told Sorry, him. Zamir. Um, let's see. I was looking at his spells, and he doesn't have really anything there, but I just like to do something kind of magical, kind of, you know, infinite worldy to uh, enhance things. Okay, so. And I just wanted to use mysticism. Okay, okay. I was say you can use spell slots. This will be the end of the thing for the day. <laughs> so you you'll get your spell slots back for the next thing. Okay, so go ahead and make your rolls. DC sixteen. <coughs> Does he give you another water? I got a water. Oh, is it enough? You need another one. I just barely got this one. Oh, okay. I drink a lot because I'm talking. Because he's a drinker. I do. I also forgot my giant jug of Mountain Dew Code Red at home. It frustrates me. I filled it up right before I came. Don't 
total? Uh, for Valero, it's a 21. Okay. Uh, for Bella, it's an impossible to fail. Okay. The DC is 16, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Acrobatics of 15. Nice. She can't fail. Okay. I don't remember what I rolled for. It was <laughs> okay, decent. No worries. <laughs> so I have the idea for Samir now. He's going to use Infinite Worlds to be like, boom, Candyland. Boom, Androidland. Booms. Skittermanderland. <laughs> I was drinking. That's not funny. <laughs> Candyland was great. You're like, boom, Android Land. I'm like, nope. <laughs> and he got a 25 mysticism. So I'm because you're using spells, it's a 27. Yay. Yeah, so yeah, you all succeeded. Uh, well, except for Vesplunk. Roll Vesplunk's piloting. He got a 19. Okay, he got it. Yeah, you guys are doing pretty good. Everybody loves your float, the jeweled flower. Valoro's out there throwing candy and he's like winging it at kids. The, the, just the, the poor kids that are just like, I'm alone, I'm helpless. Not really. But the little kids that are shy and don't necessarily want to get out there in front of everything. Don't want to get trampled by camels. Um, yeah, it's doing pretty good. Uh, Bella is just going crazy with her dances and all her cool things going on. Um, the kids are loving watching the different realities appear. And like... Candyland shows up and they're like, oh, look, chocolate waterfalls. Androidland, look, our people. Uh, what did you have? What was the third one? Skittermanderland. Skittermanderland. No. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Murlocland. <laughs> I'd go to Murlocland <laughs> over Skittermanderland. I'd rather go. <laughs> <laughs> they actually did that in the newest expansion. Oh, yeah? You go to Murloc World. Oh. Oh, it sounds awesome. <laughs> I, I love Murlocs. You fight beside Murloc you. Oh, no. <laughs> Against <gasps> Death Mur See, my favorite mission um, was in Wrath of the Lich King where you go find the guy who's trapped in his, in his Murloc suit. <laughs> oh, no. King Murloc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His zipper broke and he can't get out of his research suit. It's brilliant. <laughs> it is. Um, okay, and then uh, Bespong does a really good job of honking and driving and speeding up at the right times and slowing down. And it's like, it's a really good time. Everybody's happy. Uh, and Yinshin hands you guys a hat of disguise because you guys did so well. You're useful. Very useful magical item. Okay. Um, another week passes. During this time, the Lore Spire Complex hosts a concert, two vid game competitions, and numerous special courses, including a self-defense class hosted by former First Seeker, Jed Nura. At the end of the week, you get another comm message. Thank you for helping out with the new Spark Parade. Yinshin, Yishin's, I can't do the words, Yishin has been gushing over how you handled the hologram and what an inspiring show you put on. As you might know, Reunion Day is approaching. Reunion is a time for reaching out to distant family and friends, and returning home to feast with your inner circle. Well, our fellow Starfinder, Alora Sembar, is having a rough reunion. Her grandmother passed away this year, and she's returned home to Akaton to mourn. She and her family are determined to celebrate Reunion just like Granny would have, and I'm worried the pressure is too much for her. While I'd love to help her myself, other obligations prevent me from leaving Absalom Station at present. I'd like you to travel to Sembar's homestead on Akaton and assist the Sembars in completing their preparations so they can focus on coming together as a family. I've already booked you a shuttle and your travel itinerary is attached. All my thanks, Camellia. <laughs> <coughs> and you just watched this mile on Bella's <coughs> face get bigger and bigger and bigger. And she's like... As she pulls up her email and is like, sorry, mom, business calls. Won't be home this year. Oh, no. Have a nice day. Click. There was, a really <laughs> there was a really funny piece that I didn't mention. The previous week, you guys are in the hall and there are garland, custom garland that's being hung up by Fitch's grandchildren. <laughs> and I forgot to state that. I just went over it. I apologize, but it's really good. 
Bella. Is, is one of them stapled to the walls as well? There are five of them. Is one of them stapled to the walls as well? Yes, there are five of them stapled to the wall, and they're all holding their own little lanterns. How do you oh. think? How do you think they're being put up? <laughs> it's it's not like it's not like they're stringing them up. She's pictures just going, kajink, kajink. <laughs> I love Fitch. Fitch is awesome. By the way, Bella, these these tickets are booked in about ten minutes, so run. Run, Bella. <laughs> it takes you a day. <laughs> it, it probably takes her a sec with her booking it before she's like, wait a minute. And she turns and looks. Are you videoing it? <laughs> She's like, fair play. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a day to get from Absalom Station to Akaton. Um, and once you land, it's a short distance to the Sembar homestead, just a few miles south of the Winterlands. The temperature is well below freezing, but your transportation is warm and the journey is without incident. This is what Alora looks like. She's got an apron and a cook and a, and a, and a, and a pan in her hand. Mm-hmm. Is she a gorum? Say that last part. Is she a gorum? Um. Or what is she? Is she Akatonian? She doesn't look Akatonian. No, she doesn't. She is a Shabbat soldier. Well, Shabbat is Akatonian. She's a native of Akatonian. She's yeah. a Shabbat. Shabbat. She doesn't look Shabbat to me. No, she doesn't. She looks pretty Shabbat. Not good. Take D4 damage. <laughs> Mental. Um, it's only one. So, a little background on Reunion. Reunion is an Akatonian holiday that developed in the first century after Gap in response to the Thasteron bust. Poverty and mass immigration. The holiday promotes generosity and kinship despite economic difficulties and great distances. Traditions include sending a message to distant family and friends and then gathering and enjoy a meal with close, day, close friends and family. Traditionally, reunion day meals are prepared with cheap ingredients, ingenuity, and lots of love, resulting in outrageous dishes many Akatonians keep on the menu for ironic, ironic or nostalgic reasons, just like all the recipes from the 1950s. <laughs> Some of those spam and bananas. Why would you do that to yourselves? Some of them are pretty good, though. I've been surprised. There is that guy that does the TikTok, the old like nineteen twenties cookbook, but like he does the nice ones, not the like the jellied figs covered in like Nutella kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He doesn't do the nightmare section. He doesn't. <laughs> his, so he doesn't do like shoe fly pie. No. I think I know what that is. It is molasses pie. And no. I mean, it is just sickeningly sweet. My mom made it recently because she's like, I remember liking this. And I'm like, well, I like molasses. And she made it. And I'm like, I feel like I'm chewing Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had buttermilk pie? Uh-uh. That is a different taste in entirely. It's like a silky smooth pie kind of like um sweet potato hmm. and it's a southern dish yeah it is i don't like buttermilk i like buttermilk flavored things like buttermilk pancakes things like that like that but like it's an acquired taste it's definitely a thing it's not bad i'm curious now i won't i won't try molasses pie because it's like diabetes it sounds like yeah, diabetes yeah, it is diabetes um i don't form. eat buttermilk pie anyway anymore either so like <clears throat> Camelia is letting you know with like small little notes about how her friend Alora is a horrible cook. You're sent there to help her cook. Okay. Uh, you knock on the door of the homestead and two skittermanders open the door. If it's those two. Olive and Violet, cousins of Alora, <laughs> and the same ones responsible for the fire and the malfunctioning projector. <laughs> Hello, friends. <coughs> Hugs. Hugs. Uh, 
on the wall is hanging a grenade launcher that you recognize. Um, they're like really, really, really um, confused, but they're like, oh, come on in. Oh, we're really sorry about what happened last time. It's fine. And then Alora pops up and goes, ah, Starfinders. Oh, okay. Thank you for coming. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were coming. Uh, let's take a look around. And she gives you a tour of the homestead. Uh, in the living room, uh, Olive and Violet <clears throat> watch over six young Isoki. Mm-hmm. Bits, Flutter, Grubby, Popper, Scamp, and Slicer. Who fight over whose turn it is to play Junk Race Jitters. A popular two-player racing vid game. In the dining room, three Hickley. Becca, Cass, and Orance bicker over how to properly set the table. Lastly, there is a half-elf, Agner, sleeping in the den with their pet squawkses. Oh my dear goodness. Musa and Gator curled at their feet. This is a very Utah family reunion. (laughs) I would say so. (laughs) I'm just... There's so many people here. There's at least ten. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. uh, Alora takes you into the kitchen and shuts the door, but it doesn't really do anything to the noise? Mm -hmm. It does. It goes from a loud roar to a slightly less loud roar. Alora releases a deep breath as she struggles to retain her composure. (sighs) Well, that's my family. The Sembars might be odd, but we chose each other, and I love them dearly. Right now, though, we're falling apart. We lost Granny earlier this year, and things have been rough ever since. Mm-hmm. Granny was the glue that held us together. Since she passed, we've been lost. This is the first time we've been all together since the funeral. I thought reunion would bring us together, but it's pulling us apart. They're also determined to make the day perfect in honor of Granny, to do everything exactly the way she would have. So here I am, in her apron, with no idea what to do. Alora sniffs the air. Smells like smoke, she she remarks as I stutter. Oh, no. (laughs) Her I mean, Bella's Mm. literally like eyes to the (laughs) oven. Her eyes widen and she dashes to the oven, removing a baking sheet covered in an unidentified, unidentifiable charred lump. Alora's lip quivers, then she screams, tossing the ruined meal into the sink. I quit. I can't focus with them bickering, and this is hard enough on its own. I want to make a Ramsey quote. It's like, <laughs> there's too much spice in this that the Fremen are wanting to, that the Harkonnen are wanting to take over. <laughs> One of my favorite memes. <laughs> okay. Um, before you guys can help her, you need to calm her down. Diplomacy or intimidate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just. I know I'm playing the nice guys, but I'm just like, I'm just imagining Dodge go, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> you have a job to do, and you will perform your duty admirably. And he would do it too. <laughs> he would. And he would succeed, and she'd be like, yes, sir. <laughs> now I just imagine Busplank, just all six hands, just trying. Because she's large, and he's like hitting her kneecap. <laughs> And calves. The best bonk is nice. This bonk. Yeah. We'll say. Bella's got nothing. This bonk will say, you guys are doing this all wrong. It's ab- about you together, not just your granny. So you need to all help each other. Boom. Mm. One of those rules is good. Because Valaro is also in the slapper and saying, get your stuff together. Camp. Because he has Intimidate. He uh, has a decent Intimidate. But Splunk has a 20. Oh, oh, oh. That succeeds. She calms down. She's... she's. Uh, oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, I, I'm curious to see Do what it. he would roll. 21. Yeah. So, 
Uh, she, uh, Alora quickly explains that she was given the privilege of preparing dinner, recreating Granny's recipe of roast arabuck stuffed with stone-stored apollos, served on a bed of sticky rice and topped with gravy. Her attempts have been nothing but charred disasters. She has taken a look at the remaining ingredients in the house, but she's out of arabuck. She's like, can you go take care of, can you go hunt some arabuck for me? While you're you out, mean like literally hunted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. If you can also find some winter herbs, I'd appreciate it. She gives you her old rifle and hunting gear, an advanced Shabad Horizon Striker, and a veteran Shabad harness. Oops. Yeah, it's okay. It can come out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is a veteran Shabbat harness light or heavy? Uh, it's a good question. It's on page 71 of the armory. Outside, the sun is setting, making it dim and extremely cold. Do any of you have a life bubble or anything like that? Yep. Yeah, uh, the spunk life bubbles, everyone. Okay. So that's not going to affect your extreme because the life bubble just makes it really it makes it normal environment yep. if i can remember correctly it's there's so many things it does and the only thing it doesn't do is against radiation that's all i can remember yeah well <laughs> that's because radiation <clears throat> hates everything the veteran harness veteran shabad harness page 71 is a light armor yeah oh. eac of three and kac of five not better I'm in a, I'm in a, f a, le a, 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 ten to fourteen right now, and we're on Oc turn, and they're like, "Oh, don't do that. This will hurt you." And I was like, "Well, don't worry. It's an environment. I have my environmental protections on, which should protect everything from the environment, including any inhaled anything, and radiation." <laughs> and they're like, "Are you throwing sass?" I'm like, "Yes, because many writers forget that that thing exists." It's also, as a aside, uh, environmental protections are kind of weird because, like, if you have a rebreather, like, it extends your ability to breathe in the bad atmosphere, but all your other functions, because uh, it goes, like, a week per level that you can breathe if you have a rebreather in your armor. But the rest of your armor protections will wear out. Yeah. So it's, I'm like, I feel like it's this weird layered thing it does automatically, but it's not, it's easily forget. Yeah, it's it's mentioned and it's useful, but like, it's it's still nebulous enough that people just go, meh, rule, uh, my specific overrules it. Just frustrating at times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to hunt an Arabic, you must ex exceed, succeed at either perception or survival check, or to, to to look for footprints or a life science check to find out, to think about where their likely location is going to be. That's pretty good. <clears throat> Who did perception? Uh, Bella. Uh, the Splunk is a 20, and Zamir is a 22 perception. Okay. Uh, Bella is a 19 perception. And what did Valoro do? Valoro is a 17 life science. Okay. Valoro fails in the life science, but everybody else succeeds at finding footprints. It's okay. Now we know who our cook is. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes. You're... That's bad. What's bad? I thought culture was cooking. No, life science, life science is, is cooking. cooking. Oh, joy. That's why my chef, my profession chef, has like a 20 in his life. He puts a point in life science no matter what. Okay. Like, it's... I find it kind of funny because it's like, oh, I'm going to use survival to track down this animal. <coughs> and then you usually use survival to clean it up. <coughs> All right. I just got to put this over the fire. <sighs> 
No, I'm not trained in it. But like, yes, you can like dead. roast it. You can like <laughs> roast it over the fire, and it's okay. But like, life science is like filleting it and cooking it, like taking out the individual parts, and like this is a filet mignon, this is a tenderloin, kind of thing. You That's, rub the rosemary and garlic. Yeah, and like, like the this. Re- like it's it's there's a difference between like cooking it over a campfire and like cooking it over like a a stove campfire. Like the, those TikTok videos are like, let me use my weird shaped knife and cut open this thing and then do all these crazy things. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> You're able to track down two. Let me double check. Two Arabic yearlings. Why am I not going to be surprised when these things are as big as us, if not bigger? Oh yeah, they're medium. A- they're medium animals. And aggressive, I'm betting. Most animals are aggressive. When you're trying to kill them. Yes. Yeah, so <sighs> Could be a reason why she gave us a sniper rifle. Yeah. Yeah, what level is the sniper rifle? Oh. I didn't look at that. <laughs> Do you remember what it was, Casey? It was a show bud. Should I? Do it I? is an advanced show bod Horizon Striker, Packed Worlds, page 194. <clears throat> okay, go ahead and put yourselves in the square. There's a lot of squares. I'm sorry. Did I, did, I, did, I scra- did I put a section over farther next to his uh, his dice gel? Nope, on the other side. Right there. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm an idiot. Give me a moment. Level 6, 3d4 piercing, uh, 120 foot range, 2 round capacity. Okay, so 3d4? Yep. Has a thousand foot range. Yeah, but to use trick attack with that, I have to have special special special. skills. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't have. Uh, we could start at a thousand feet from it and just start popping them. <laughs> and then they could be like, and now we're like, you're the ones in the canyon. <laughs> Seriously, though. Um, okay. Could. It's all ice and snow. It's difficult terrain. Um, it doesn't really say where's ice and where's snow. So, so the whole thing is difficult terrain. Yeah, the whole thing is difficult terrain. The DC of acrobatics checks attempted on ice are increased by 5. DC of stealth checks attempted on snow increased by 5. So ice is increased to acrobatics. Let's say... I'm going to mark it on the map here for you. Just to dick with you. All it does is means I'll be creative in my movement to stay off the ice for my acrobatics. Not that I think it actually works like that, but... Why not? They are currently standing on a lake bed of ice. Everywhere else is snow. Anything past the red is ice. Okay. So it will increase your acrobatics to do trick attack. I know. Okay. Just let I just wanted to confirm. Um okay. Um That doesn't give. <sighs> That's stupid. Go ahead and roll initiative.
Okay, uh, Zamir? Is a 14. Valoro? Is a 16. Bella? 11. The Splunk? 25. Go ahead and make stealth checks. Uh, sure. Hmm. Okay. So, Valoro is a eight. Okay. Bella is a 30. Uh, Basponk is an 8, and Zamir is a 17. Okay, wow. Um, the two Arabucks, like, sniff the ground, look up, and they're staring right at you. They don't see you, but they see everybody else. It is Besplong's turn, because Besplong has a ridiculous um, initiative. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. So pull out the Staccato Rifle and the Hunting Rifle. This Hunting Rifle has bigger range. Five, eight. All right. So, yeah, why not? Oh, yeah, because I drew my weapon. Okay, so, um, against the uh, fiery one, I'm going to try to set up some herring fire, which works. So, there's only a plus two to hit. That one. And then... Difficult terrain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hop over here. Okay. Alright, and that's the spawn. Okay. Now it's their turn. How close are you? Eleven fifty five feet. Uh, fifty feet. Okay, move blue fifteen feet closer to you, Besplanc. Move orange 15 feet closer to Besplank. And they'll both, like, shake their head. And their antlers will, like, make this weird, like, sound. And just sonic reverberations will just hit out at you. Okay. So the first one is a 17E to hit. Yep. The second one is less. Okay. Okay. It is now... Valoro, Zamir, and uh, Bella. Okay. Um, yeah. Because he can do so much in this. <laughs> Who? Valoro. Uh, just have him double move. He'll get an extra thingy. So, 10, 30, 40, 50. Yeah. 
fifty. Ooh, two points. Yay. Uh, Zamir and then Bella. Oh, he will form his shield. Okay. Thing this spell is really long range. Um, so uh, we're just gonna cast slice uh, reality on blue. So fort save fails. All right. So it takes eight damage and is staggered for four rounds as it hears a haunting bark, 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 bark as the Swedish chef emerges. And stabs it. <laughs> I... <laughs> How is that again? A burk a burk a burk. Well, I know what's going in the short. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it would definitely just make me stagger. What the freaking <laughs> crap is that? Um, goodness. Uh, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's now Bella's turn. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> to self don't drink on your turn Machine gun. She gonna fire? Mm-mm. That's her max. Okay. A, well, it's not her max, but she doesn't want to get any closer. She doesn't want to be the closest. That's understandable. It's Miss Blanc's turn. Mm. Um. Oh, that's a cool ability. Arctic Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a picture of an Arab? Oh, that's what a picture of an Arabic looks like. Oh, that's a cool it's a jaguar Arabic. with antlers. Yeah. <clears throat> and the last two weeks, we found out just how dangerous a Destrachan is in second edition. They're mean. Mm hmm. Let's see. Um, that would be most helpful. Yeah, I think. Um, we'll just do uh, herring fire on red. Okay. That that works. Okay. And let's see. I think he's good where he is. So that's the Splunk. Um, since the Splunk is really the only one that's firing at them, even though that's not like Zamir did damage, they're re he's really far out. Mm -hmm. Um, they're both gonna shake their antlers at you again. Yeah. Uh, twenty e. No. That's a crit. So that's twenty eight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, make a fortitude save. Nice. So 19. Okay, now make another fortitude save. Okay. 18. Okay. You're not staggered, you're not deafened. Good. Because I had a really good chance of doing that. I only have a fortitude save of 4. Plus, 
Uh, you take six points of sonic damage. Total? What? Total? Yeah, six total. Okay. Only uh, one I hit. Oh, no, 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 valid, valid, valid. Um, Eleven total. Uh, Thank you for reminding me of the crit damage. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, <laughs> are these just harmless? I feel bad now. <laughs> they crit with a six. <laughs> I mean, they're not exactly harmless. They- you think that some if you get closer they're gonna hurt you right they're they're trying to keep you at bay mm-hmm. they're young mm-hmm. okay uh everyone else they don't realize they're being hunted Valoro, zamir and then bella okay so Valoro. 30 40 50 that actually gives him another another point yeah He's up to three. Yeah. This is the first time I've had him up to three. Yeah. All right. Uh, Red can give me a fortitude save. No. As Beaker <laughs> emerges <laughs> in front and goes, me, 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 and suddenly starts screaming as his uh, head starts smoking. Okay. And then disappears. Uh, eight damage. His head disappears, or all of Beaker disappears. So all of Beaker disappears okay. as the Terran reality closes. Okay. I love Beaker. Beaker was my favorite. <laughs> me 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 me. And then that one's also staggered for four rounds. Okay. So okay, yeah. Um, gosh dang it! I was not expecting the Muppets to make a make a show here. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Um. It's so now uh, Bella. Yeah. We have a bonus to hit red currently. She can't double move. Five. Uh, no. We'll go there for now. Okay. She's just double moving. Okay. okay. Um, closing range. Bisplunk. Let's see. Uh, yeah, why not? So. Let's see how much. Are we doing that again? Okay, we got plenty of shots in there. Um, so. We'll feel brave and try and hit both of them. Mm. The high is a 14E. That hits. Okay. The other one was a 5. So. Uh, 8 Sonic. Against two? Uh, red. Okay. Doesn't seem to work as well. Mm-hmm. Alright. Weird. It's almost like creatures that have sonic attacks are resistant to sonic. But that's um, not always true. Not always. The charge, the you have to at least go 10 feet, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. How far away is Valoro? Uh, 10 feet. 10 feet. Okay. Uh, blue charges and makes two attacks. Okay. Don't actually know what his shield gives him for AC. Um, the tactical just is another plus one. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, he, he's gonna hit you with his antlers for the first hit, and it crits. Of course it does. And the second one is a thirteen K. Okay, so one D four. Oh, you can't charge though. It's difficult terrain. Well, no, it's staggered. It is staggered. Good, good call. So, how close is it? Ten feet. So it can move there, it or can... it can shoot. It's gonna shoot. 
Do you want me to re-roll the attack? Is it a different number to hit? The first one is a crit. The first, yeah, never mind. I want to. I want to ask you because that's a fair <laughs> we'll, question. We'll take it because Kay. it was rolled. Okay, so that's a total of twenty-eight. And we know what the number was. Yeah, twenty-eight e. So that is seven, six, thirteen Sonic, uh, which means he gets another point because it's a crit against him. He can't take anymore. Oh, he has a max of three. That Sucks to be three. him. Uh, make a fortitude save. That should be good. Okay, 21. Okay, you're not staggered. Make another one. Um, 10. You are deaf. What? What'd you roll? One? A three. Oh, my. Gosh, it sucks. Yeah, he's deafened. Okay. It's like, just went silent. Not the first time this has happened. For the you get a... Going dark. You get a... You get a resistance for from sonic damage if you're deafened, right? No. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Because, like, sonic... Sonic is still vibration. Okay, just curious. Just yeah. curious. Um, the other one is staggered. The other one's gonna shake its antlers at Val Valoro because he's closest. Does a twenty E hit? I don't think that hits. Because of the shield, no. Yeah. Okay. What's your normal AC? Twenty. You also get a plus one additional. So your EAC right now is twenty two. Or okay, yeah. yeah. I was like, wait a minute. There's yeah. something. Yeah, you get your yeah. Whenever you have an entropy point, you automatically get a plus one enhancement bonus to your AC, which is cool. Yeah, it sucks when you have a biohacker in the party, but it's cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, that's them. It is now Valoro, Zamir, and Bella. Okay. Deafened is you take a negative four penalty to initiative and op uh, opposed to perception checks, and you automatically fail sound based perception checks. So it doesn't do nothing to you. No, it doesn't. Okay. He's just kind of like, this reminds me of that time that grenade went off nearby. Okay. Couldn't hear for like three days. Oh well. Here, little beastie. <laughs> so yeah, he moves. That staggered saved your life. 20 feet? Mm. That would have been 2d4 plus 14 plus 2d6. Even Valora would have taken some damage from that. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so that's plus 6. So 20. 20 hits. So 9 damage. Acid. Okay. Acid. Do bludgeoning. We got tender acid. <laughs> <laughs> They're yearlings. They're already tender. Okay. Hmm. Zamir. Um so thanks to all these really long range spells. Kermit D Frog here. Uh on uh red over red. here. Uh, animal is going to pop out and take a bite out of him for five piercing damage. No save? Uh, no. It's a puncture veil. Okay. And they bleed one damage for three rounds. Okay. Yeah. Or uh, two damage for three rounds. Sorry, that was for... Doing one target. Okay. And that's his full, so he's done. Bella. Okay, she is going to go. Orange will be her target. 10, 20, 30. Out of the ice? Uh, I got a, I got a glare ice. from here. Yeah, the ice is here. She okay. stayed out of it. So, she will black trick and 
orange hit. Okay, so that is a 32 to yes, trick. Yes, that tricks. And that is a 19 against flat-footed e. K. Yep, yep. that K. hits. Flat-footed K? K. K. Eleven damage, piercing. Okay. Uh, Besplunk. And it is flat-footed now. Okay, good to know. Um, How much stamina does Valoro have at this level? 44. That's not bad. Yeah, no, he's he's not hurting. I think my level 6. Dang it. Eight, uh, 20 constitution with toughness is like, he's got 100. It's just garbage. It's what they are. Yeah, he gets, he gets a plus 11 to his every every time he levels. So, renew Herring Fire on blue. Okay. And we will walk over here. And that'll be the spot. Okay. Um, the, year, the blue yearling is going to... Rack Valoro. Okay. A third. A thirteen. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> a thirteen. Not even on a bad day. Okay. To be fair, he rolled a couple of crits against you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So okay. Um. Uh. The other one is gonna turn and look at you. Shake its ears. Shake its ears? Shake its antlers. Uh, that hits you uh, for a 27. Yeah, that'll hit. What's your EAC? 19. Or, never mind. That's all right. <laughs> and you take six points of sonic damage. Plus, you need to make a fortitude save, please. Okay, so that is a 20. That succeeds. Lucky you. It wound up in the crack and was right between 8 and 20. I'm like... And it looked like it was going to be a 20 until it fell into the crack. And I'm like, oh, you little... Okay. Valoro, Zamir, and then Bella. All right. Valoro's going to... He takes... Valoro is going to spend two of his entropy points. Cause I One more round staggered for blue, two more for orange. He can do that. <clears throat> okay, one. So 2d4 extra damage. Okay, yes, but where does it say that? Some... Oh, you there spe- it you sp- there It's it a move action <coughs> per... It's a move action. You can spend up to the amount you have in your entropy pool. Okay. Per point is 1d4. You can expand. If the boosted entropy strike hits, he deals an 1d4 damage for every EP extended. He's expending mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. Okay. That is a 14e. That will hit. I'm sad that the, the boost doesn't, doesn't scale. Hmm. It doesn't scale with you. Like, right now, my Vanguard does, like, 1d10. 2d10 when he hits. But it's still 1d4 for an extra entry point. And it's, like, not worth it. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So it's 3d4 total plus 7. So 5, 9, 16. Bludgeoning. Okay. Alright. Um, 
another pull from the Muppet Dimension and a fuzzy bear in the costume comes out and says, Why did a chicken cross the internet to get to the other site? Waka waka! And it takes two piercing damage for that joke. Red does? <laughs> uh, blue does. Blue does. And it's bleeding two for three rounds. Okay. Bleeding damage happens at the top of the round? Um, end of the round. End. Okay. It's going to shake its head at Bella. Orange? Or it's Bella's turn now. Yeah. It is oh, Bella's sorry, turn. sorry. Sorry, my brain was on toast. Hmm. Bella's turn. Okay, so the trick attack is 31. So against its flat footed EAC, or KAC, I forget. Don't know why I forgot that for a sec. It's a 24 to hit. 24 does hit. All right, five, seven <coughs> damage, and it is flat-footed. It falls over. Huh. Dead. Yeah. It is now Besplonk's turn. Besplonk will take out his trusty hunting rifle. Line up the shot. Miss with a nine KAC. Ah, you know, it's the holidays, we'll re-roll it. I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Is it worse? No, it's only one better. I rolled a two the first time. It's a three now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a 10k. Do you have any, do you have any Novas? Um, did you, I think I have one. You might have one, so it's plus one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that doesn't hit. It's okay. Um, you hear a very angry, uh -oh. I can't duplicate it. Don't ask me. Mm -hmm. It is no longer staggered is the thing here. Valoro mm -hmm. gets an attack of opportunity. Oh, he's definitely taking it. Oh. Does he miss? <sighs> yeah, unfortunately, it's a two on the die. Oh, that's definitely going to do it. It was a 20 and then flipped. Uh, what's the total, just to make sure? Eight. Eight, okay. There have been some. No, things. he's not exactly a phenomenal striker. 13k? No. 15k? No. As it just charges you, trying to just hit you with these antlers. Okay. <laughs> um. Then it bleeds too. Yep. Uh, Valoro, Zamir, and Bella. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, is gonna take a full action to charge. So that gives it's him... difficult terrain, he can't charge. Oh, that's right, he can't. So, yeah, he can get, he can double move to there. <laughs> and still gets an EP. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. We'll send out the dancing chicken ladies to pick, to uh, peck the creature for three piercing. Okay. 
You are nitpicking this thing to death. <laughs> um, did you, you did two points of damage to it last time, right? Yeah. It drops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can okay. save the day. Um, <clears throat> you now have two choices: butcher it in the field, or bring it back to Alora. Make sure we can butcher it. So, if you want to butcher it, make a DC. Not that I'm not telling you it. Uh, profession: butcher, cooker, hunter, or a survival check. Survival. Or you can just transport the whole era book back. With an athletics check or an 18 in, oh, yeah, an 18 engineering. I'm just going to tell you, apparently. Okay, we're DC 14 profession, DC 16 survival to take care of the, to field dress it. DC 16 athletics or 18 engineering to transport it back. Well, that's survival, so. I don't, neither, neither of these two have it. Well, Looks like you're taking it on the way back. <laughs> engineering or athletics? Yep. Got no. 23 engineering over here. You're able to construct Strap a travoy. It to the hood. Wow. What? <laughs> a 30 athletics? 31 athletics. Oh my gosh. Bella. Bella just like, nope. Just like one arms it. Okay. Um, you're. Yeah, I imagine. The Splunk is getting his little thing set up, and Bella literally just throws one over her shoulder and starts stomping off. Okay. And the Splunk's like, okay, only <laughs> have to carry one. <laughs> um, now you're going to go on your way back. You need to do a life science check to find some of the herbs. Life science, survival, or relevant profession check to forge edible herbs. We'll probably do it. That is a 23 life science. Yeah, you're able to easily pick up enough herbs to supplement the dinner. Yeah, it makes sense. He used to fight here. Okay, you're able to... Is that actually true? <clears throat> Pretty sure you can fight. Akaton. Yep. You're able to... Quickly get back home. Takes about 25 minutes, a little more time than it took to get out there. Uh, Alora is ecstatic and it promptly asks you to help for cooking. You have everything you need. Now you need to make a a bunch of checks to make sure you cook the family recipe correctly. Mm -hmm. DC 17 profession baker, chef, or cook. Or DC 19 culture or life science check. Mm -hmm. Now you can choose to aid. What the freaking crap? Okay. Oh, this is going to get weirder. I'm sorry. There's multiple things here. You need to help her cook. Additionally, you can attempt to spread holiday cheer. Um, God, there's a lot of things here going on. Um... So you can either cook or spread holiday cheer. That's your choice. Okay. So the cooking is a culture check or life science check. Um, to spread holiday cheer, you can do kind of a bunch of things. You can do life science, survival, diplomacy, engineering, bluff of diplomacy, athletics, bluff, disguise, sleight of hand. There's a bunch. Yeah. Okay. What are the cooking ones? Culture, life science, or profession. Okay. What's your culture? Uh, 12. I think you're cooking. I mean, what is the life science? Ch Seven. If he's cooking, he can't be used for anything else. So, oh, that's fine. Yeah, you know, there's a. If he's the engineer and the diplomacy, that takes care of a lot of, gets rid of a lot of the other issues here. But, okay. But you said there were other things as well. Yeah, life science survival. 
Diplomacy Engineering, Bluff, Athletics, Disguise, Sleight of Hand. All right. So I mean, I've got Sleight of Hand. Okay. Uh, the Spunk is going to start cooking. Okay. Got some 25 culture. Okay. Um, Alora is going to help you and aid you. She's going to give you a plus two to that. Mm-hmm. And additionally, you all the herbs you got give you another plus two, so you have a 29. You are able to successfully cook this recipe. Like Emerald says, bam! Mm-hmm. Okay. Those who are not cooking, Valoro, Zamir, and Bella, go ahead and try to spread holiday cheer and joy. Role play okay. it a little bit, too. <laughs> tell me what skill you want to do, and I can tell you kind of what it can be. Okay. No, I know what I'm doing. Okay. I really know what she's doing with this. She is going to use her sleight of hand, and she's going to just, like, do the disappearing, reappearing quarter trick. Okay. It works great with cousins and little children. Yeah, yeah. it does. Okay. So she, she's she got her little credit, and she's like, now you see it. Now you don't. Okay. And what's that behind your ear? <laughs> so here is her sleight of hand. So that is a 27. Okay. All right. Uh, Zamir is going for the cat in the hat plan. So we're going to a living room. And I'm going to be like, kids, I got something we can all do together. He's going to use infinite worlds to create a little snow area in the living room. <laughs> And that is not what I was thinking when you were saying Cat in the Hat. I thought you were literally going to pull Thing 1 and Thing 2 out. Oh, no. He doesn't have, he doesn't have summon grenades. That's their allies. Okay. okay. But, um, so, we're just going to have some fun uh, with, like, diplomacy. Okay. And then, uh, all right. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's only a 32. Okay. And then, uh, it turns out the timeout worked. Um, and then, of course, after a few rounds, as I said, cat in the hat, it all disappears, and living room's back to normal. No you could scene. actually play the floor as lava. <laughs> we can. <coughs> but the parents disapprove. Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay, uh, Valoro. Okay. This is going to go with his whole, he is a gladiator. Okay. So... He is going to use his. Uh, oh, it's recall entertainment. So he's going to, still being gladiator, he's going to show off some of his. He's going to tell them about some of his duels in the Akatong circuit. Okay. And he's going to show them, like, some of. Act out and play the whole. Here's how I won this fight. Okay. So athletics? Yeah. Oh, not bad. 19. Okay. Um, it's chaotic. But Splunk is in the kitchen, cooking up a storm. Zamir's putting snow everywhere. The Yusoki are trying to figure out where Bella is putting the cred stick. No idea where. And Valoro is just like, ha ha, and the Skittermanners are just glued to him. Along with the Yilkri. The Squawks are going insane in the snow. You have calmed this house down. It's, uh, it's weird. It's quiet. And a few minutes, a few minutes, a few hours, 20, 30 minutes later after, ah, what's his bucket? Besplank is just slaving over the stove. Alora brings out this beautiful roast Arabic packed with apello stuffing with mashed purple and blue root vegetables stewed greens, 
sticky rice, gravy, and numerous pies. She brings it to the table. There are mismatched colored chairs, differing heights. And as everybody sits down, she goes, remember those that we have lost. And after a minute of silence, you guys all dig in and it tastes real good. I don't miss you, Mom. (laughs) It takes two days to get back to Absalom Station. And Camellia is just there waiting for you. I'm so sorry, Mom. You won't believe what we had to go through for this family on Akatar. Your loving daughter, Bella. Camellia is there with a different holiday sweater, and she's just so happy with you. (laughs) She's like, thank you, Bella, Zamir, Valoro, and Besplank. I am grateful that you were so willing to help everyone enjoy their holidays. She then offers you a flower. And it looks pretty close to the flower that's blossoming on her head. She says, this is a very important flower. This is a flower of celebration. It's a magic flower from the first world that will never fade, will never wither, and it enables you to share your sparkling spirit wherever and whenever you want. And she, like, thinks for a moment, and sparklers just start shooting out of the flower. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the end of the scenario. You guys got every single dang secondary objective. Congratulations. And Bella takes the flower, pulls out her comm link, snaps a selfie with it, and says, Look, Mom, something from the first world. You don't have one. (laughs) That's horrible. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed our stream and that you will join us next time.